Good evening, and welcome to Immaculate Heart of Mary Church. This weekend, we are celebrating the fourth Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our readings can be found in your red worship hymnal on page 1120, that's 1120. Our opening hymn is also in the red worship hymnal on page 592, God Has Spoken by the Prophets, that's 592. Please stand. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Amen. Brothers and sisters, as we prepare to celebrate these mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy.
Let us pray. Grant us, Lord our God, that we may honor you with all our mind and love everyone in truth of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I dedicated you. A prophet to the nations, I appointed you. But do you gird your loins, stand up, and tell them all that I command you? Be not crushed on their account, as though I would leave you crushed before them. For it is I this day who have made you a fortified city, a pillar of iron, a wall of brass against the whole land, against Judah's kings and princes, against its priests and people. They will fight against you, but not prevail over you. For I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, strive eagerly for the greatest spiritual gifts, but I shall show you a still more excellent way. If I speak in human and angelic tongues, but have not love, I am a resounding gong or a clashing cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy, and comprehend all mysteries and all knowledge, if I have all faith so as to move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away everything I own, and if I hand my body over so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not jealous. It is not pompous. It is not inflated, it is not rude, it does not seek its own interest. It is not quick-tempered, it does not brood over injury. It does not rejoice over wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. If there are prophecies, they will be brought to nothing. If tongues, they will cease. If knowledge, it will be brought to nothing. For we know partially, and we prophesy partially. But when the perfect comes, the partial will pass. When I was a child, I used to talk as a child, think as a child reason as a child. But when I became man, I put aside childish things. At present, we see indistinctly as in a mirror, but then face to face. At present, I know partially. Then I shall know fully as I am fully known. So faith, hope, love remain these three. But the greatest of these is love. The word of the Lord. with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus began speaking in the synagogue saying, today this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. And all spoke highly of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They also asked, Isn't this the son of Joseph? He said to them, Surely you will quote me this proverb, Physician, cure yourself, and say, Do here in your native place the things that we heard were done in Capernaum. And he said, Amen, I say to you, No prophet is accepted in his own native place. Indeed, I tell you, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the sky was closed for three and a half years and a severe famine spread over the entire land. It was to none of these that Elijah was sent, but only to a widow in Zarephath in the land of Sidon. 
Again, there were many lepers in Israel during the time of Elisha, the prophet. Yet not one of them was cleansed, but only Naaman, the Syrian. When the people in the synagogue heard this, they were all filled with fury. They rose up, drove him out of the town, and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town had been built, to hurl him down headlong. But Jesus passed through the midst of them and went away. The Gospel of the Lord. So I've been a Christian all of my life. In fact, I've been a Catholic. And I think I, I mature enough now to say, just to know very well that, you know, God... God doesn't, doesn't care all that much about my life. I mean, there's, there's so much taking place in our world. There, there's so many, so many people to care for, so much going on. And I, the reality is I'm so insignificant that God, God doesn't really care all that much about me. Is your blood boiling? <laughs> Obviously, I think we, we react, you know, that... No, that Get out of here, Father. <laughs> but of course, we, we know that that's not true. But I hear that all the time. And I, I think people speak words like that um, for, for a reason. I mean, obviously, it's not true. Sometimes people say those words out of a sense of continually at least perceiving that God is distant. Sometimes they, so they say something like that. Or other times they, they do, they, they look out on a world and they see other people who seem, at least in their in worldly eyes, to be so much more significant than they are. And, you know, this person's more holy, or this person has this great gift of, of whatever. <laughs> or they might look and say, well, look at this whole swath of our world who is in such tremendous need. That's not me. That God's caring about those people. And of course, it, there, there's a part of that that is true, that there's always someone who has greater gifts in certain specific areas. And of course, there are. It's important for us, especially as Americans, to remember that the, most, the majority of the world is much more hungry, much more in greater need, and, and there's much more poverty. It's important for us to remember that. But we also know that in this mysterious way, God does care about each and every one of us. And that I'm just struck by this, that first reading today, that first line of our first reading. Before, this is God speaking to Jeremiah. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. It's this intense gaze of God on Jeremiah. Now, of course, then he speaks this word over Jeremiah about how he will be a prophet for the nations. And that's something a little bit more particular to Jeremiah. But that first line is over all of us. The Father looks at us, before I knew you, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And of course, he, he still knows us and has care for us and has plans for our life, gets into our life and wants to be, to be wants to have his way in our life even more, has plans for it. And it's in a very, very blessedly singular way in each and every one of us. I love that psalm that proclaims we are wonderfully made. That's, that's both in our bodies, but also in our souls and the way that the Father looks on us, how profoundly individual we are. And in that individuality of a kind of a mission that is unlike, although related, of course, always related in the sense that to bring Christ, 
but unlike any other. Someone once told me that there, there are as many kinds of saints, possibilities of saints, as there are human beings in the world. Why? Because God has a very particular mission for each of us. That's why sometimes I, I, I think it would, it's kind of important for us in a way, just in a way, for us to have blinders on. Not to be looking at how this person is living out sainthood. Although sometimes that can be helpful, it can give us encouragement. But sometimes when we look at the other person, we, we end up with, with the false, false belief. Well, I can't do that, therefore I can't be a saint. But we're meant to, to know deeply God has chosen us, formed us, really cares for us and really has a plan for each and every one of us. This Monday we are going to be celebrating one of my, the feast of one of my favorite saints, St. John Bosco. And he, he had a, a beautiful mission that was given to him, of course, un, again, unlike any other saint, but he drew, drew to himself many children who were without parents many children who were lost and trying to find their way. And the, the, the way at the time for training children was incredibly harsh. It was, you know, you, you do this or you don't do it, and there was punishment if you didn't do it right. And St. John Bosco, through the gifts that he had, he just in a way kind of discovered it, began to draw children to himself just by by juggling, by telling jokes, by, by walking on tight ropes, drawing kids to himself, and then began to just teach them by his example. And he drew hundreds of children in that way. That's, this is a saint who is unrepeatable, just like all of us, called to live in this new way. You know, in a, in a very particular way. And I, I kind of marvel in, in the gift of our, all of our life. I just, I, I, often, I frequently marvel at the mystery of God's providence in my own life. How in the world that was I given the blessing to be sent here to Immaculate Heart of Mary at this time as following all, the, all of my predecessors to now be pastor here for you. And of course, I, I'm very aware of my, my weaknesses and my, my sinfulness. I'm not saying that I'm special in that way. But I know that part of God's call for me toward sainthood is using the little gifts that I have to love you, to love you in this parish. And it's a blessing for me. And of course, we, we can look at our, any of us can look at our own lives, the people who have been put into your life, the, your own sons, your own daughters, your spouses. How is it possible that they have been placed in your life? This, to be loved by you, as weak as you are, and, 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 and with the gifts that you have. That's the Father choosing you, the one who knows you, the one who knew you from the beginning. Sometimes we were left with a sense of, there's this, this little lie that floats around in the air and sometimes we catch it, that it, everything has just happened by, by chance. And that is a, a horrible lie. God has created us, and we are here, and the people are in our lives for people who are meant to be loved by no one else but me and you. What an amazing gift. And it's part of that line that we're meant to know deeply. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. God has created our hearts and he has a plan for us.
Let's stand together and proclaim our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With confidence in our Father, let us turn to him with our needs. For the Church, that we may be strengthened in our mission to spread the good news, finding in the Lord refuge and protection, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our leaders, that may courageously uphold the dignity of all human life, especially those who are marginalized by our society, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For justice for victims of gun violence, that we may work to see an end to gun violence in our nation, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For teachers, administrators, and staff of Catholic schools, especially our regional school, Notre Dame Academy, that they may be blessed in handling down Christian values to the young ones in their care, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our families, that the virtue of Christian love may increase our patience, our kindness, our mercy, as we work to settle disagreements and conflict, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the special intentions in our parish, for those who are sick or homebound, especially Carol Hoffman, Macrina Sudbeck, Beverly Mead, Evelyn Mustadsky and Frankie Kruss, for those who have died, especially Pete Truex, Wally Cruz Jr., son of Teddy Cruz, and Michael Jared Kimmel, son of Jerry Kimmel, and for Mike and Maureen Daly, for whom this Holy Mass is being offered, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. God of love, fix in our hearts mercy and compassion and a tenderness to all those in need. Grant this in all the prayers we make to you through your ultimate gift of love and mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our offertory song is in the Red Worship Hymnal on page 701. Not for tongues of heaven's angels, that's 701.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O Lord, we bring to your altar these offerings of our servants. Be pleased to receive them, we pray, and transform them into the sacrament of our redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
but the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer one another the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my room, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Our communion hymn is in the Blue Gather hymnal on page 442, Faith, Hope, and Love. That's 442.
Let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O Lord, that through this help to eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We have a couple of announcements. Because I, I will be in the Holy Land in a couple of weeks, there it will be no 7.15 a.m. Sunday Mass on Sunday, February 13th, when I, again, when I am gone in the Holy Land. We're still looking for a few people who would like to fill in some adoration times or be substitutes for adoration when others run into a conflict. If you're interested in signing up for any of these, there are sign-ups in the table in the gather space. Registration for our Lenten faith study entitled No Greater Love, A Biblical Walk Through Christ's Passion begins today. It will be a five-week study beginning the week of February 28th. 
You can register in the table in the gather space or in the parish office. Please remember to mark your calendar for our upcoming Mardi Gras Italian dinner on Saturday, February 26th. This will be a catered dinner. There'll be a limited number of seats sold and it's going to be fantastic. So I'd love to encourage as many people as possible to sign up. Tickets are on sale today after mass in the gather space. Our next music cafe by our music ministry will be on Sunday, February, February 20th from 5 to 8 p.m. There will be songs and poems of love and friendship. So drop in for a little bit or stay the entire time. It's another great date night. Notre Dame Academy is enrolling for the 2022-23 school year. Registration is open for ages 2 through 8th grade. And just another note about our Notre Dame Academy. This week is opening up Catholic Schools Week, so they're having all sorts of fun events throughout the week. And, of course, they, the teachers and staff want to send gratitude back to our parish and, of course, to St. Gabriel's Parish with whom we, we share the school in, in support. But they want to send their gratitude back to all of us for our support of the school. And then also, just to put a bug in everyone's ear, this coming Saturday it will be their Grand Beginnings fundraiser. And that will be an online fundraiser with lots of... It's a, 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 an auction taking place, so you can sign up for that via our, our get more information in our bulletin and on our website today. Finally, one of our longtime parishioners, Pete Truax, passed away this week. The funeral for Pete will be on Friday, February 4th at 11 a.m. So let's pray together for the repose of Pete's soul and for the consolation of his family. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord. May he rest in peace. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. And for his family, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Our closing hymn is in the red worship hymnal on page 787, The Spirit Sends Us Forth to Serve. That's 787. to come.